Let's talk about this particular protection, Rice Protection Society, the Gold Coast Aborigines Rice Protection Society. The Protection Society, Rice Protection Society responsible for protecting our crown lands for us. And these were the politicians of those days, the politicians of that era. Because their activities were so clean and genuine, so patriotic, you hardly can call it, classify them as politicians today. You hardly can you We struggle to classify them as politicians today, but they were politicians. The John Mensa Sabes, members of the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, they were politicians. But because the game of politics has changed so much so that it has become a game of tiffery, a game of robbery, a game of murderation, enough killings down there in another segment, that particular circle. With the aggressors here, you will free. So we can hardly, we hardly, we have problems or challenges classifying these people as politicians, but they were politicians, but they were so selfless, so patriotic, so much so that they weren't interested in accumulating for themselves and their family, but for accumulating for the country Ghana. Gold Coast then. So when these people were fighting to protect our crown lands, they weren't fighting to share the lands among themselves. They were not fighting to protect the lands and share the lands among themselves. No, they were fighting to protect these lands for Ghana, for you and I today. Today's politician has the opportunity to do the same. He's interested in robbing, stealing them for himself and his family. Let's talk about the selfless politician, rare ones. The Gold Coast Aborigines Rights Protection Society, known in short as ARPS, was an African anti colonialist organization formed in 1879 in the Gold Coast. As Ghana now, Ghana is known, it's known as Ghana now, but it was formed. Um, during the Gold Coast era, sometime in 1897, 1897. Originally established by traditional leaders and the educated elite to protect the Crown Lands Bill of the 1896 and the Lands Bill of 1897, which threatened traditional land tenure. They put together the particular Rice Protection Society to deal with the threatening nature of the atmosphere at that time just to protect our traditional land tenure system. The Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society became the main political organization that led organized and sustained opposition against the colonial government in the Gold Coast, laying the foundation for poli political actions that would later that would later emerge here in the country yes this particular arps the aborigines rights protection society laid the foundation for political action that will ultimately lead to the ghanian independence that rights protection agency gave birth to political parties you know it's later faded away and gave birth to much more organized and much more refined political organizations that took Ghana through the journey, the process that gave Ghana the independence we're enjoying today. Even though it's a facade, it's a fallacy. It is not a total independence. That's not the independence Dr. Kwame Nkuma fought for us. This is a different independence. We are enjoying a totally, totally different independence together. Is delegate, the delegates of the Aborigines Rights Protection Society were active in international organizations and at the 1945 Pan-African Congress, he gained support from Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who later became the main leader of the independence movement. But however, the middle class intellectuals who supported the society broke with Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. They broke away from the society group broke away to join Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you know, because they were less committed to full-scale revolutionary efforts. Consequently, the society declined as a major political force. 
J.W.D. DeGraff Johnson, Jacob Wilson Say, J.P. Brown, J.E. Castle Hayford, and John Mensah Saba were co-founders of the Aborigines Rights Protection Society of the Gold Coast. The reason we have a Chimata forest, the reason we have a Tiwa forest intact, and we need them to come and look for concession, bribe us, you know, ambush us with a loan before they can use the land, is because of this particular rights protection society. I didn't know because of them they could have just taken the land like that. You go to Zimbabwe, Europeans, white people own lands, and Zimbabweans are struggling to have lands to farm on. You go to South Africa, white people, the white minority own the lands. And the black majority, they have nothing. Because they didn't have the likes of these people. They didn't have the likes of J.W. DeGraff Johnson, Jacob Wilson C., J.P. Brown, J.E. Castle Hayford, and John Mensah Saba to put together a rights protection society to actually protect their crown lands for them today. They didn't have them. They didn't have their likes. We were lucky to have their likes, not the likes of Sir John, but the likes of these people to protect the lands for us and not for themselves. Today we have wicked greedy bastards all over, wicked politicians all over. They now care about the people now, man, they now care about you. It's about them belly, them family. Now let me tell you about the foundation of this particular important rights protection society. The Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society formed a conglomerate of different groups of intellectuals in Cape Coast and Southern Ghana who sought to protect the traditional land tenure practice, I mean practices, of the indigenous Gold Coast people from being grabbed or from being taken away by the British colonial government. At that time, the activities of the British colonial government threatened our land tenure system. If they didn't act fast, they could have taken over our lands forever. They could have gotten our chiefs to sign documents, to lease or to give them our lands forever. And today, we would have been occupying lands in Ghana owned by British people. Owned by British people, the Queen and his people. That would have been the story if these people hadn't acted fast. Today, St. John would have gone to Britain gone down to London, go and negotiate with them before he could steal a land. If he could even steal. If you needed to buy a land, you would have you, 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 would, you would need to strike a deal with a British, a British man. Because they would have been owning most of the lands in this country. But these selfless leaders as politicians those days, those days made sure they secured our lands for us and they secured the lands for the traditional people. Listen, they were politicians. And when they were securing the land, they were securing the lands for our, they were crown lands. So they were securing the lands for our, for the, for the, for, for, for our, our, our traditional people. They weren't securing the lands for themselves and their family. Like today, John Mensah Saba, you know, um, Castle Hayford, those people, Jacob Wilson say, they would have been the owners of most of the lands in this country. But when they were fighting for the protection of those lands, they weren't fight, fighting to protect the lands for themselves, but for Mother Ghana. That's why we have government lands. We have lands in the hands of traditional rulers. They own their lands, and you need them to lease it out to you. They are the reason today nobody owns a land in Ghana. It is leased to you. When you buy a land, you don't own the land. It has been leased to you. And it is renewed It is, is it after every hundred years. Also, every hundred years, it has to, you have to go and do the renewal. Lands are rented out to people in this country, but are not bought or owned forever. And even the thief politicians, most of the thief politicians, don't even know this and appreciate this. So they grab the lands and wheel the lands out haphazardly with no sense of sense of dignity. No, man. There is no honor in Tifri. 
There's no honor in stealing from the very people who give you a mandate to come and serve them. There's no honor in that. Today you're dead and buried. Fingers are pointing at you as a thief. What's the honor in this? God forbid that you die. You have your family alive. Your sons, your kids, your nephews, your, your, your late wife. They are still alive. Only for them. To wake up one bright morning with fingers pointing at you in your grave as a thief. There's no honor in that. Protect your dignity. You know, I don't care. People are making reference to the fact that we are you, man, sir. No, no, your lawyer will break you, sir. No, man. The end justifies the means. I am even suspecting all he accumulated as a lawyer. I am suspecting them. If that's how he ended up, then I am suspecting all he accumulated, you think it is genuine. The end always justifies the means. The likes of these people who founded the Aborigines Rights Protection Society they didn't do that. They didn't protect the lands for themselves and their family. They protected the lands for you and I as Ghanaians. So today, we have our lands in our hands and no British, no European, no foreigner, no Chinese man can come and bully his way around on our lands like that unless with the support of our politicians. We own our lands. You go to Zimbabwe, they are struggling with them. And that was what gave Mugabe a bad name because Mugabe took the lands by force. Without due process, Dimba, Mugabe took the lands by force from them. Because to Mugabe, it was annoying I need to go through some process, some diplomatic process, some bureaucratic nonsense to get my lands off the hands of foreigners in my own country. He, 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 he thought it was, so, it was nonsense to do so, so he, he took the lands from them by force. And that was what gave Mugabe all the troubles he went through as president of Zimbabwe at this time. Needed to negotiate with them. Even when they wanted to take our lands back for us, they negotiated with them. Pay attention. They had to fly all the way to London, you know, Britain, to negotiate with them. Tell them, listen, they needed to negotiate with them. But we'll get there and I will tell you how they did the negotiation. One of the initial goals of the Gold Coast Aborigines Rights Protection Society was to ensure that every person may understand the Lands Bill of 1897 the same. The Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society became a voice for the rights of indigenous people by both broadcasting their aims in their own newspaper, Gold Coast Aborigines, and advocating on behalf of indigenous land rights by presenting the reasons for their dis that dissent of the Land Bill of 1897 in front of the Legislative Council. So they made sure that they protected these lands for the indigenous people of the country. They made sure everybody at that time understood that lands bill, got a deeper understanding of the lands bill, so you know your right and fight for your right. They did that by broadcasting their aims in their own newspaper, the Gold Coast Aborigines. They did not stop there. They advocated on behalf of indigenous land rights by presenting the reasons why they needed to protect these lands for the indigenous people in front of the legislative council. Now, particularly, particularly John Mensah Saba, a key member of the Gold Coast Aborigines Rights Protection Society and a lawyer, helped to advocate against the introduction of the bill of the 1897 by urging that it was no different from a previous unsuccessful bill in 1894 that its introduction would break family ties would break family and society ties because for we we are a people who believe in family, the external family system. That's how come Sir John was willing uh, most of his stuff to his nephew. Uh, nephew, external family system. We believe in that. 
So they wanted to protect our lands for us so they can secure our family ties, society ties. Because if they allow the white people to own the lands and then give us their own tenure system, we will lose that particular ties. We won't have the traditional family ties we have here in Ghana. We wouldn't have, no, it wouldn't have been there by now. They also argue that the land was valuable to indigenous people for its religious significance. Imagine a white man owning a land where Antoine is. But pay attention, imagine. The white man, British people own the land around the Antwa area, Antwa Yama area. No good po, you go to no, it's a very popular no good po, right? Is that the name here? Yeah, from the around the Volta region. Imagine white people owning, British people owning the land, you know, where, no, where that shrine is. Imagine. So there's a religious significance to our lands. Religious significance, even the Achimota forest in question has a religious significance today. Christians have hijacked the forest. You go there, it's a prayer camp. You go there, it is a prayer camp. So we cannot overlook the religious significance of our lands and then give them, hand them over to foreigners. So to go back to the foreigners, to ask permission to use them, no. Today, through indoctrination, they are getting us, they are wiping us, washing us away from our traditions and culture. They wouldn't have used indoctrination anymore. They would have used by force because they own the lands. Get out of there. Now do it down there. We now want it. And you have to move because they own the lands. And that's what is happening in South Africa and Zimbabwe. White people, they take to indigenous of the country what to do with the lands. They are the owners of the biggest farm, the big farmlands. And they employ the indigenous, the owners of the lands, as laborers on the farm. Tell me, what's the difference between that and slavery? That you live in your own country, but you can't own a land. You don't own a land, even to farm on. It is the foreigner... The white man who owns the land in your own country and the only job you can do on the land is as a laborer and not as a farmer too, as the owner of a land. No. That was what angered Mugabe and he thought, no, going through a due process would be ridiculous, would not make sense. I own the thing by nature. There's no way I should be spending time going through some process called due process. I am taking my thing. Go away. They started painting Mugabe black. Using international media. They got our own people to foolishly follow them. They painted them on totally black. Totally. Julius Malema is fighting for same in, in South Africa. Solely fighting for same in South Africa. White minorities still own the lands. Majority of the lands are in the hands of white minority. The black people can't even have lands. And they're also foolishly fighting their own black brothers, Zimbabweans, Ghanaians, Nigerians, rather than the people holding on to their lands. They are fighting black people. Through xenophobic attacks, xenophobia. Sometimes you don't understand the black man and the black mentality. Sometimes you just can't comprehend. But listen, we have some religious significance attached to our lands, and for that reason, the Aborigines' rights protection society needed to protect our crown lands for us, if for nothing at all, but because of the religious significance of most of our lands. The Gold Coast Aborigines' rights society, I mean protection society, sent a delegation to London in order to advocate for the dismissal of the lands bill of the 1897 in front of Joseph Chamberlain, the Secretary of State of British, I mean of Britain at the time. They went down there to actually order to advocate, they went down there in order to advocate for the dismissal of that particular lands bill, the 1870, I mean the 1897 lands bill in front of Joseph Chamberlain the Secretary of State of Britain at the time. A notable aspect of the delegation in, in, is that it included not only members of the Gold Coast elite, but also prominent merchants, business people. It was through their meeting with Joseph Chamberlain that the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection was able 
to get support for the denunciation of the Lands Bill of 1897 and the assurance that native law would remain and prevail with regards to, I mean, devolution of lands. You get that? It was through their meeting with Joseph, Joseph Chamberlain, that the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society was able to get support for the denunciation of the Lands Bill of 1897, which gave British people, foreigners, the power to actually regulate our land tenure system. They got the chance, they got the support to denounce that particular bill. And they also gained the assurance that the native law would remain and prevail with regards to the devolution of our lands. The Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protecting Society eventually fell out of fashion in exchange for newer nationalist movements, such as the National Congress of British West Africa in 1920. Now, the formation of the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society came at a point during the late 19th century in which the educated Gold Coast elite were systematically barred from high-ranking positions in the colonial government. They were strategically getting there. So they started by barring all the elites. The elite, I mean the educated Gold Coast folks at that time. He barred them from high-ranking positions in the colonial government, took them out. It was this exclusion, in part, that prompted them, that pricked them, that gave them the lesson. If we don't act, one day we wake up to rent, to live in our own country, our own rent lands, live on lands that do not belong to us again. It was this exclusion that fueled, both, that fueled both the cultural nationalism and the anti-colonial political activity that led to the creation of the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society in 1897. As part of the emergence of the cultural nationalism during the late 19th century, members of the educated elite throughout the Western African region began to return to their traditional roots by either reclaiming their original names when these could be discovered or new African names were given to them. When this happened, they woke up. Today, what we call woke, they decided to realize that no man, we can't walk in a white man's shoe. That's not, I mean, a reliable shoe. So most of them who were having Castle Hayford, who were having white names, now began to conscientize themselves. So they went back to pick their family names or their traditional names. They went back looking for their indigenous names. They went back. Those who had lost count, those who had lost their roots and couldn't recall their traditional names because they had gone through a series, you know, of phases of transformation and they couldn't recall their traditional names again, gave themselves new African names. It was a mental revolution business. This reclamation of nomenclature influenced the naming of the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society. It was originally conceived as a branch of the Aborigines Protection Society of London, but later renamed as the Aborigines Rights Protection Society to serve its purpose for the people of Gold Coast. Now entrained in the founding of the Gold Coast Aboriginal Society, you know, was a brief that was a belief that both the political actions of the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society and the movement against foreign encroachments on native lands were joint vehicles of nationalism. Moreover, the key players in the Gold Coast Aboriginal Rights Protection Society predicted their belief in a movement against the Lands Bill of 1897 on the consumption, on the assumption, I beg your pardon, that the economic interests of the village chiefs were identical with both of the rural population as a whole. They were thinking about the village chiefs and the village people and not themselves. 
Sir John becomes a forestry, forestry commission, whatever. And he's not thinking about the village folks and the village chiefs. He's thinking about himself and his nephews. That is the kind of politicians we have today. After all he had as a lawyer, after all he accumulated as a lawyer, wasn't enough for the man. When he got the opportunity to serve, like the John Mensah Sabes, like the Dr. Castle Hayforts, when he got the chance to serve like they did, he wasn't interested in the, the well-being of the village folks and the village chiefs. He was interested in stealing for himself and his nephews, his family. Those are the kind of politicians we have today. And too long we've been telling you not for them are thieves. Them now can't be serve you now, man. You run out for them every election year. Insult people for them, kill each other for them, hate each other for them. Most many people don't want to see my face because of politicians. They themselves are not politicians, but because they support one politician or the other, they hate you to the core because you tell them the truth. You think they care about you? Most of them are sitting on government lands. Most of them have government lands in their hands. And they will die with them in their hands. If not because they are myopic people, like Sir John's death, will, 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 will be a lesson to them. It doesn't matter how much lands you grab, you will die and leave them someday. Whoever you will them to will die and leave them someday. But greed will not open their eyes to see. And realize that no man, I don't need that much. What I have is enough. Let me serve the people. There's honor in service of the people. There's honor in serving the people than robbing from the people. Today a man is dead. Instead of me to be here hailing him, telling his story in the history segment to honor him, we are here pointing fingers at him, accusing him of tiffery in his grave. Here people say rest in peace. They write rest in peace beautifully. Nice handwriting rest in peace on the graves of people. If you like say rest in peace 10,000 times for the person. If the works of the person don't warrant peaceful rest. He will not rest in peace. She will not rest in peace. It doesn't matter how many air conditioners you put in the person's grave. The person will never rest in peace. They built a house around his grave. Why wouldn't they build a house around his grave? Because he had robbed enough for them. So family where you, they, they actually, oh my God, people are sleeping under rains in this country. Rains are beating people. And you build a room, a self-contained for a grave. You think that will give the dead a, a, rest in, a peaceful rest? Forget it. The works of the dead man. It's what gives him a restful, I mean, a peaceful rest. And not how much you decorate the grave. Now they succeeded and they protected the lands for the people, for the chiefs and the rural people, the villages. That's why the chiefs have the, their lands in their, in, their, in their hands. That's why when the Achimota saga popped up, you had the royal families of the guns coming out to speak. They also are contending, they also they are, they are litigating, they have an issue with that particular land. Even though it's a government land, it's in the hands, it is owned by chiefs, it is owned by people, the Ga people. You hear the Owus family, George Owus family, and Lord, you know, according to um, history, they own the lands, even though there's some dispute around it and they are fighting over who actually owns the land originally. That is because these people fought for that. And the chiefs and the indigents of the place own the lands. And they, you, if you need the land to do something, you need to see them. That's why we have that tenure system here. I didn't know because of these people, we wouldn't have gotten that tenure system. Before you use the land, you will need to negotiate with somebody in Britain before you get the chance to use the land, even though it's your land. The Aborigines Rights Protection Society. They weren't thief politicians. No, they weren't selfish. They were so selfless. So much so that when they were fighting, they were fighting for the village folks and the village chiefs to own their lands.
Now, this is highlighted in a controversy that suggests that despite the beliefs of the colonial administrators of the Gold Coast Aborigines Rights Society, I mean, Protection Society, self-interest in the in in the protects, I mean, movement, they were they were there was overwhelming evidence of a long history of cooperation between the intellectuals and the indigenous political authorities, at least in Cape Coast. So they got their lands, secured their lands. And these were the president of the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, Jacob Watson Say. I'll be talking about him in the course of the week. J.P. Brown, I will tell you about him. J.E. Castle Hayford, I will tell you about him. William A. Suman, you know, I will tell you about him. J.E. Biney, I will tell you about him. J. I mean H. Van Heen, I will tell you about him. Corbina Sechi, I will tell you about him. John Peter Alote Hammond was the secretary and later a member of the committee. All of these people served in their capacity, you know, to protect the crown lands of Ghana for the people of Ghana. Let's save Achimota Forest. Let's save the Etiwa Forest. Leasing them to private companies. All in the name of creating whatever. Echo whatever. If government will own it, we have no problem. It should be a state facility. If you want to convert a portion of the Achimota forest for state use, uh, state use for foreign exchange, no problem. But leasing it out to a private entity is what the people will not accept because we know you people. That's what you do. You create the companies yourself and then you lease the things, you give the contracts to yourself. That's how comes Sir John used his company to donate a pickup to the Forestry Commission and congratulated himself and his company. And it took him to die before we knew that he had the, the company, he owned the company, and he was using the company, he was awarding contracts from the Forestry Commission to the company. It took him to die before we know. Most of them, before we know the havoc they've caused us, unless they die. And that will be too late. When you have the opportunity to serve, serve with all your hearts. Serve like there's no tomorrow. Serve like you'll be judged. Of course, we will all account for the power we wield on earth. I have this song from Jesus.